Hi there. Let's dive right into our session, how to create a standout portfolio. My name is Lisa Ito. I'm a manager on the Wix Playground Academy. I'm an illustrator and graphic designer by trade and have helped to hire designers on various teams throughout my career. At Wix, I help recruit and teach design students with the OT here. Hi, and I'm Yotam Kellner. I'm the lead mentor for the Wix Playground Academy program together with Lisa. And my background is also graphic design and branding. Um, I love teaching and mentoring, and I know a lot about our platforms uh, here at Editor X and Wix. So let's start. Yeah. So as I mentioned, we're from the Wix Playground Academy, which is a five-week course for young graphic designers such as yourself. The focus of the Academy is to help students discover their creative identity and build their online presence. Exactly. And over the years, uh, we've helped over 250 students from across the world to design their, their uh, personal and professional portfolios. Uh, these are three examples from our most rich, recent graduates. We've learned a lot over the years and we understand how hard it is to make a great portfolio. Even on our program, uh, the process takes up to full five weeks uh, with the help of a lot of mentors from Wix and Editor X. So to get started, we gathered our top tips, best advice for you today, and we want to share it with you. Exactly. So all of our students on the playground, they design their portfolios on Editor X. And what exactly is that? Um, it's a platform for building websites that was specifically created with designers in mind. So it gives us the ability to create sites without any code, varying from super simple to super complex. It gives us the ability to really control every single detail, component, and interaction. And one of Editor X's key features is giving us the power to choose how our sites behave responsibly across different screen sizes. And we're gonna go into that a little bit later. So here's a quick breakdown of what we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, we've broken it down into personality, the work, and navigation. Let's start with personality. One of the top ways to spot a standout portfolio is whether or not it expresses personality. In today's digital age, your portfolio is your calling card, and it's important to make an impactful first impression through your design and your UX. So number one, you are your own client. Follow the same steps you would apply for any design project. Start with research, select a concept and direction, sketch, design, execute, and then get feedback. Yeah, and make sure your portfolio tells a clear story. Every design project that we do tells a story, right? What's your story? Who are you? And what are you looking forward to do? Exactly. And once you do choose that story, make sure all the things on your site support that story. Your project selection, your images, your text, your design, including your colors and your fonts, the flow, the UX of your site, the information hierarchy, make sure all of that is consistent and it supports that story. Yeah. Have a clear call to action. Different portfolio can have different goals. Some designers want to get a full-time job while others are looking to, you know, um, to do freelance projects and clients. Some even run a store um, and sell the prints online. What do you want to do with your viewers on your site? Exactly. Don't forget to spice things up, um, add extra personality using things like unexpected interactions, fun animated GIFs, videos, engage your audience in a way that really feels like you. Let's learn more about um, taking a look at a few examples okay, of our, uh, some of our graduates. So, for example, this is Emily, who just graduated from our 2022 European Wix Player Academy, and we want to talk about her. So, here's how Emily defines herself. Emily is all about fashion and art direction, as you can see. So, that's great. So, let's uh, have a sneak peek into her process. If Emily likes fashion so much, we can see that her visual search on her mood board supports that. And we can see that her personal values are also connected to fashion and to the things she realized that she loved about her work. So that's where you start. You realize about yourself, what you love, um, and you find inspiration about it. After defining her values, Emily began sketching layouts for her portfolio. Even in these wireframes, you can see some of her values are already being considered. For example, elegance, the script uh, typeface in her header and the letter invitation call to action refers to the idea of elegance, right? It's very clear. Composition, grid design supports the value of composition. And she continues her process with more high fidelity designs 
uh, with the values. You know, if you take a, a look at the right uh, side of the screen. So sensory, the physicality of the branded clothing labels in the header, the texture in her photography. Take a look even at the physical scan of the envelope compare to the one on the left. And nostalgic. So the style of her photography and fashion design have slightly retro and dreamlike quality. And we can see that as well. And mysterious. So strange image crops, blurry textures, and slightly odd compositions, adding a layer of mystery on Emily's work. So great. Yeah, it was fantastic to work with her. And this is the final outcome of Emily work. So this is the actual portfolio website and the result. And we can see very clear and very, very vividly her personality. Emily is treating herself like a fashion brand, right? You see with the, with the branding tags. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. You can see very quickly, you can tell that Emily's graphic design work is inspired by fashion and under action. So the things that she learned um, that she's passionate about, and you can see it here. Exactly. And yeah, so to contrast, uh, we wanted to introduce you to another one of our students, Derek. He was also from the EU 2022 cohort of the Wix Playground. Um, on the next slide, this is Derek's short bio. So you can tell really quickly he's into print and punk design, which is going to come into play in the next slide as well. And these are Derek's values. They're lo-fi, punk, brutalist, eclectic, playful versus organized. So already this is a little bit different than Emily, right? So different. Yeah. So Derek also brought those values through his sketches and layout explorations, um, but you can kind of see how it's already changing from Emily and how she did it. Um, it was a way to explore different layouts and explore different concepts using those values. Um, after wireframing and collaging layouts on the left side in the black background image, um, Derek started experimenting with his high fidelity designs, which are on the right side of the slide. You can see uh, the lo-fi punk element coming through with lots of layering and overlapping of things, grungy textures, the brutalism value comes through via the typography, the use of color and these like really heavy compositions. The eclecticism comes through via the varied media, varied media and types of projects and the way he collages his work. And playful versus organized, that dichotomy comes through because he's, you can see he's trying to create this like grid structure um, with the text and the layout, which is very organized, but he brings in the playfulness using cover interactions, which we're going to show you next. So this is ultimately the direction that Derek settled on. And compared to Emily, it feels more zine-like, right? He's using tape and handwriting um, as the elements in his portfolio. He loses that elegance value, but earns a more playful experience using his hover interactions and sticky effects in a different way. And these are both really easy to implement in Editor X. Up next, the work. Let's do it. Yeah. So first tip is be, be relevant. I think make sure your story and work relate to the purpose of your portfolio. That's very important. For example, if you're an illustrator and you want to apply for a UX role, you must have a UX project to show, right? In other words, be relevant to the role that you want to get hired to. Makes sense. Our next tip is to make an impact. So get to your work quickly. 85% of hiring managers spend less than three minutes per portfolio. So we want to see your work up front. In the same vein, make sure that your work is large and that viewers can see the details of your project. We don't wanna spend time trying to like see the little nitty gritty details inside a really small project image. Completely agree. Um, next up is quality over quantity. Very, very important uh, mm -hmm. topic. And Lisa, you know, a question that we get a lot is how many projects should I put in? Yeah, every time we're teaching at, you know, different schools and different cohorts, we always get this question. Right. So the sweet spot tends between four to six projects. So it's not a direct, um, you know, math, uh, but it really depends on your project and what role are you applying to. Let's say I have 10 projects. How would I choose? How would I know what to choose and what, uh, what to put and which are my best ones? So I think, you know, you start to ask around other people, you know, uh, professors, colleagues, peers, uh, your classmates. And, you know, you, you be super critical with yourself and choose the project that you're super proud and passionate about. And you can talk and present later on in the interview. Right. And if you're actually only passionate about three projects, that's totally fine. Just figure out the best way to show them off. Right. We'll have to, time to see more than two or three projects anyway, right? These I know, days. right? <laughs> 
Um, in that vein, quality over quantity also applies to how much you show about an individual project. So consider the length of your project page, right? Uh, if you only have three projects, you have a lot more real estate to make a longer project page, right? But if you're showing over 10 projects, then maybe make the length of those project pages a little bit shorter. You know, um, think about how much you're showing, introduce the project at the top and only a few lines that provide background, your intention and where the project was featured and include only enough examples to provide intrigue and not so many that you're gonna distract the viewer. Exactly. Spend time on the overall design. Super, super important for us as designers. Uh, don't forget the basic rules of good design. Are things aligned appropriately in a, in a grid? Is there hierarchy in the typesetting, sizing, spacing? Does the color palette allow legibility? Can you actually read the font? Tip, if you want to be original, don't use a template. You can always start from a blank canvas, also on Editor X. Exactly. And our last tip is to have confidence in your work. You've picked the best stuff, right? And you should be proud of what you've done. Don't apologize by including student work or for something being your first try. Don't sell yourself short. Exactly. Confidence is a key point here. So let's roll back to Emily, remember her? Let's break down how she presents her work on, on the website. So first you choose the best work, as we said, right? Your projects. Then you choose the way you want to present it, right? There are many right. ways. Yeah, and so actually Emily chose to show her work in two different ways, correct? Can you talk a little yes. bit more about that? Yes, exactly. So one example that we can see here is the gallery, right? So it's more straightforward. Her gallery page presents her work images next to each other, and that works right? Because the vibe from the work is consistent. It's all connected to fashion and photography, as we said, and it's one language. On the other hand, if I roll back the homepage, um, you can see that she's using a list, which is more typographic and neutral. And the interaction is engaging the thumbnails, each one at a time. That means she can pretty much choose whatever she wants at a time, and there's not going to be a conflict. So that's a good practice. Exactly. And so we're gonna bring back our friend Derek again to kind of contrast how he shows off his work. So Yoti, at a first glance, how would you compare Derek's homepage to Emily's? Well, first of all, it's completely different, but you know, since Derek is a multidisciplinary designer, his work can be very different between the project, right? Like get art and illustration and, and design. That's why he uses the cutouts on his thumbnails to create consistency. Since Emily's work, as we said, is consistent in, si in style, she's able to use her art-directed photography uh, without having the change uh, of the thumb thumbnails like Derek did. Exactly. And I think that's like such a smart move on Derek's part. Not only does it prevent the colors and styles from clashing or becoming too busy, but it also adds to the playful collage style of Derek's punk-inspired website. Um, another great thing I love about Derek's portfolio is the design of his project pages, which you can see here. He uses that scrolling and sticky, right, to control the user's pacing. And that's just an effect that we love to use on Editor X. He includes a wide diversity of imagery to get a really full breadth of a project. So he's showing different parts of the same project, showing process sketches, um, even showing the finished work. He shows flat scans, live photos of it hung on a wall, or even with his like family members holding up his posters. Um, you get a really, really great balance of showing and telling, and you get a full understanding of one project in a quick and engaging way. Good stuff, right? Absolutely. So now that we've talked about personality and your work, your project, let's, let's talk about navigation and navigating through all that work. Very, very important part of, of any website, uh, basically. So we mentioned before, on average, um, most hiring managers spend three minutes or less uh, you know, viewing a portfolio, and that's very short. So that means it's crucial, crucial to make sites easy to navigate. Exactly. So here are key points to remember when designing for navigation. So that story in CTA, remember what you chose for yourself. These will guide your decisions when you are making choices on how to tackle that navigation. So for example, are you an animator and you want your user to watch your videos? How would that experience look different than if your main goal was to sell maybe some art prints in a store? Exactly. Stay organized. So unlike poster or book design, you know, we can be 100% sure how our viewers will explore uh, through our work. Uh, this makes organization crucial. Use basic design principles like hierarchy and compositions to create clarity so users don't get lost. 
Exactly. That also ties into thinking about your user flow. So create menus to guide your visitors, but leave room for free exploration. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure, right? So users need to figure out how they can take the next step and navigate somewhere else. This uh, means you should include signals to maintain momentum. So you could maybe even use arrows or even copy like next or scroll to see more. Right. Very important. And we see some students forgetting uh, about this part and then, you know, people can just leave your site. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want that. Um, check on all screens. You know, more than 50% of all web traffic is through mobile and Editor X allows you to design pixel, pixel perfect for every screen. So you should definitely do that practice. Yes. And then, you know, kind of like spicing things up for personality, add delight to your navigation. If it fits with your story or concept, find ways to bring fun into your interactions and user flow. So you can add hover animations or you can even write unique copy for your buttons. Like instead of saying see more, you could say check it out if that fits your personality. Exactly. So we also wanted to bring Derek back to look at his navigation. At the very bottom of his project pages, he includes this next project and last project navigation, which we really, really like to see in portfolios because it makes it easier to move from one project to the next. And the top menu uses that sticky feature again that we like to talk a lot about in Editor X. Um, so the menu is always at the top. It's always sticky and always visible. So you can always get back to home or go to the projects or about or contact. Um, what you're seeing here is the very bottom of its contact page has a really clear CTA, which is nice. Um, Derek's very clear about wanting to find a job in the design industry, and we like to see that he's very you know, upfront about that. And then lastly, um, leaving the home button on the top left is really important. That happens you know, in a lot of sites, and it's a really common practice, and we'd like to suggest it. Definitely. So for this section, uh, we actually wanted to introduce another uh, graduate of our uh, Wix Playing Academy. And this time is Michael Passion from our 2021 uh, US Academy. So on his site, Michael chose a layout of a single scrolling page with expand and collapse. So he uses hover interactions to queue users in on the project titles, great organization of content, all project text and lists are in the same format and have the same content. And the menu stays pinned to the right side through the whole site, you know, so it's easy to navigate between the sections. And the call to action in the bottom is very clean, very clear, like on Derek's case, uh, email and social media, reach out for me uh, for more. So I'll play this video one more time. And that's definitely an, uh, an option, you know, one pager compared to Derek's multiple pages, uh, but really depends on your content and the length of your project. Um, Everything is, is optional here and you can do okay. all of it. Awesome, so that's, that's all for today. Uh, now that we understand what's important to have in a portfolio, personality, the work and navigation, you can actually start creating on Editor X. Lisa, where would you start? I actually think I need to start with some research and mood boarding. How about you? Definitely, yes. Um, I would want to see more inspiring website like what we've seen today. So that's a great start. Uh, by the way, Editorix also had tons of resources, videos, classes, tutorials, webinars like this one. And there's a community forum, forum so you uh, can ask questions. So good luck and enjoy designing.